Final item of business is members' business debate on motion 16595 in the name of Myrtle Fraser on the way of St Andrews. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I would ask those who wish to participate to press the request to speak buttons. And I call on Myrtle Fraser to open the debate for around seven minutes, please. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I start by thanking all the members who signed uh, my motion to allow the debate to take place this evening and thank them in advance for their uh, contributions. Uh, my motion acknowledges the way of St Andrews and uh, the wider issue of the importance of pilgrimage in Scotland, which is now included in Visit Scotland's Walking Scotland brochure for 2019. And it's also an opportunity to acknowledge the wider role of pilgrimage in our society and its important economic and social aspects across the country. Now, I must confess at this stage, Deputy Presiding Officer, I've never actually been on a pilgrimage personally, oh. unless you count the occasional visit to Ibrox. Uh, but pilgrimage has long been an aspect of Christian life and devotion. In Western Europe, it enjoyed a golden age of 500 years from the early 11th to the 16th century, when thousands made their way from all over Europe to places associated with saints and in particular to key centres like Rome, Santiago and St Andrews. With the Reformation, pilgrimage rather went out of fashion, particularly in Scotland. But in recent times, we have seen a revival of interest in pilgrimage. And this has been coupled with the development of long distance walks or pilgrim trails over the last 20 years. For example, the, the John Muir Way, not itself a pilgrim route, but a, a long distance route, opened in 2014, now attracts more than 300,000 users a year. The Way of St Andrews is a lay Roman Catholic organization committed to reviving the ancient tradition of pilgrimage to St Andrews, once one of three largest pilgrimage destinations in Christendom. Yes, I'll give way. Yeah. John McAlpine. Uh, thank you very much for taking the intervention and congratulations on securing the debate. Do you agree with me that the Whithorn Way, which spans from Glasgow to the ancient historic Whithorn Chapel in South Scotland, is also a welcome addition to Scotland's rich network of pilgrim walking routes? Uh, yes, indeed. I'm very happy to agree with that point by, by Joan McAlpin. And I'll, I'll be amazed if other members during the course of this debate do not talk about the pilgrim routes in their own uh, parts of, of Scotland. Um, but to return, if I can, to St Andrews, there are now six long-distance pilgrim ways to St Andrews. The St Margaret's Way, uh, starting in Edinburgh. The St Duthick's Way, starting in Aberdeen. The St Columbus Way from Iona. The St Wilfred's Way from Hexham. St Ninian's Way from Carlisle and the Ladywell Way from Motherwell. And uh, I'd just like to pay tribute, if I can, to the Secretary of the Way of St Andrews, Hugh Lockhart, who joins us in the gallery tonight for all the work he's done uh, in promoting these routes. The estimated total benefit from these pilgrim routes to St Andrews is due to rise from approximately £1.5 million today to around £2.5 million in five years' time. And these are uh, annual figures. When Fife Council commissioned a feasibility study in 2014 for the creation of a Fife Pilgrim Way, average daily expenditure was assessed at £12 per head, with total economic impact being assessed at £1.8 million annually. And these figures are not just plucked from the air. We've seen elsewhere in Europe the importance of pilgrimage, in particular in relation to routes like the Santiago de Compostela in Spain, also known as the Camino, which now registers over 300,000 pilgrims a year. Some members may have seen the recent television series covering a group of travellers on this historic route. One of their experience was the warm Mediterranean climate, which might be less of an issue for those travelling to St Andrews. Um, but across Europe, pilgrimage is gaining recognition and encouragement from both religious and secular authorities, not just for its benefit to private individuals, but for the economic benefit it can bring to rural and undervisited areas. Nick Cook, who's secretary of the Scottish Pilgrims Route Forum, based in Dune, tells me that the original manifesto, Pilgrim Routes Across Scotland, was launched in early 2011 by Action of Churches Together in Scotland here at the Scottish Parliament. And the Scottish Pilgrim Routes Forum was established a year later. Scotland now has over 1,000 miles of pilgrim walking routes, either established or under development in accordance with the best practice promoted by the Scottish Outdoor access code and I'm sure we'll hear from other members during the course of this debate talking about different routes in different parts of the country. 
The Fife Pilgrim Way is to be officially launched in Dunfermline on the 5th of July, and this will help raise public awareness of achievements to date and serve as a major boost for the local economy in Fife. A new book by Ian Bradley entitled The Fife Pilgrim Way has just been launched and will help promote that initiative. It's not just across different parts of Scotland that we see a revival in pilgrimage routes. English Heritage are working with the British Pilgrimage Trust to revive some of the ancient routes to Canterbury, to Walsingham, and to Hales Abbey in Gloucestershire. The Church of England has started a research project, Pilgrimage and England's Cathedrals, to identify and analyse the core dynamics of pilgrimage and sacred sites in England from the 11th to the 21st centuries. And although the debate tonight is mostly about pilgrimage in the Christian tradition, it's worth acknowledging that other religions have similar traditions. In Islam, there is, of course, the tradition of pilgrimage to Mecca, and though I'm not aware of any uh, non-Christian pilgrimage routes in Scotland, perhaps these are issues we could be looking at developing in the future. The benefits of pilgrimage are clear. For many, it is a spiritual experience. For others, it is about companionship, as walking with a shared aim to a historic sacred destination is likely to bring people together. People see real mental health benefits from walking as a company in a shared endeavor. Pilgrimage is an old metaphor for the spiritual journey through life and involves good fellowship. And of course, there's also a benefit in terms of fitness, encouraging activity at a time when we all live two sedentary lifestyles. Presiding officer, the benefits of promoting long distance walking trails and pilgrimage are clear. It's good to see this ancient tradition being revived and it's exciting to hear about the economic benefits to Fife and the other areas of Scotland that are going down this route. So can I close by thanking again all members who have supported my motion and I'm sure in the course of the debate we'll hear MSPs talking about routes in different parts of Scotland and the importance of these routes to their areas. And finally, can I thank again Hugh Lockhart, Secretary of the Way of St Andrews for the information he has provided for this debate and for the work he and his group are doing to promote pilgrimages to St Andrews. Thank you. Uh, we move to the open debate and speeches of around four minutes, please. Bruce Crawford, followed by Liz Smith. Uh, thank you, President Officer, and many thanks also to Murdo Fraser for bringing this very interesting debate to the Chamber this evening. Now, from what I understand, President Officer, Scotland has seen a significant rise in pil pilgrimage over the certainly in this century. And this is due in part to the new, renewed interest in Celtic saints and the early Christian church. Organizers being inspired by the work carried out, for instance, as Murdo Fraser's already alluded to, Santiago de Compostela in Spain, which revived the Camino de Compostela, uh, Santiago, and it's now an internationally renowned pilgrim way. And I believe there is a real and exciting attempt here in Scotland being made to replicate the Camino and its likes here in our own country. The first modern pilgrim route, I understand, was the St Margaret's Way, formerly inaugurated in 2012. It starts in Edinburgh, travels through the South Queens Ferry and over to the Five Coastal Path up to St Andrews. The Abbey uh, on the Isle of Iona is the starting point for the St Columba Way. The St Columba Way runs eastwards from Iona to St Andrews some 200 miles. And this is a very diverse, often hilly track where pilgrims will have the opportunity to see Scotland at its very best. Vast mountain ranges, stunning lochs, and spectacular glens. People on this route will also be able to visit the many villages and settlements that scattered along the Southern Highlands. In fact, one such village, it'll be no surprise to Murdo Fraser, is Killin in my own constituency, situated on the banks of Loch Tay. Killin's a small village nestled in the shadow of Tarmacan Ridge and where Ben Laws. Indeed, pilgrims and other visitors to this beautiful village will have the chance to see the world famous Falls of Dockart, which are in the heart of the village itself. Now, as a tourist uh, village, is it not somewhat ironic that the worse the weather gets, the more dramatic the main tourist attraction becomes? Uh, but Colin's history is of great interest to many who visit and the history of the village has great character, which endures to this day, which I can testify to. The Killin incident of 1749, in the aftermath of the Jacobite uprising, gives a flavour of the type of community Killin is. Two men causing mischief, captured by the British Army, not for crimes that they had committed, such as 
stealing of goods, but because they were in full Highland dress, which the British Government's Dress Act of 1746 had outlawed. I bet you didn't think you'd hear about this in Pilgrim's Way debate. They were captive until a large mob of the good folk of Colin secured the release. And I can testify to this day, the good people of Colin will not stand for injustice. Now, Colin was also once the home to the McNab Club, McNab clan, whose seat was Kennell House in the village. A prehistoric stone circle can be found there in the grounds of the house. And that schedule monument, consisting of six upright slabs, is a truly spectacular sight. Now, President Officer, why is it important to talk about the history of Colin? Well, because the St Andrew's Way are being built as a tribute to our nation's history. It's a commemoration of the legend of St Andrews and St Margaret and St Columba. It's also a recognition of the important role that religion has played in shaping our history. It's therefore fitting that along these pilgrim routes, people take whatever opportunity they can to soak up as much of the local history as possible. The St Andrews Way are Scotland's Caminos and its importance to our country, not just in terms of promoting our history and culture, but the economic benefit from increased tourism impact could be significant. I'm pleased that along with these routes, pilgrims will have the chance to visit places like Killin and learn from the experience, the special nature of these communities. It's early days in their inception, but I hope the interest that these routes continues for many years to come. And I'd like to thank again Murdo Fraser for bringing this debate to the chamber. And I can only say in his reference to Ibrox, I've never been on a pilgrimage to Ibrox. I've visited it many times. It's been an utterly miserable experience for me <laughs> because I'm, I'm a Dunfermline athletic, athletic supporter and I don't think we've ever beaten him at Ibrox. So I cannot share in his joy. Liz Smith, followed by Elaine Smith. Uh, thank you, <laughs> Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I thank my colleague, uh, Murdo Fraser, for securing this member's debate. Uh, and can I also uh, say to Bruce Crawford, I very much enjoyed his uh, speech just now, particularly his comments about Killin, a place I know very well, not least because it is very close to some of the uh, best scenery in Scotland when it comes to our great Munro's. Uh, as somebody who is a very keen walker myself and one of the members representing the town of St Andrews in this parliament, I very much look forward to enjoying the way of St Andrews in exactly the same way that I've been able to do with the John Muir Way, and uh, some 30 years ago, I think it was the Santiago de Compostela, though I have to say I was there uh, mainly for uh, tourist and scenery uh, reasons rather than from an official uh, pilgrimage. So St Andrews was, of course, a, a very popular uh, pilgrimage site over a thousand years ago, given that some of Scotland's patron saints' relics were kept in the town's cathedral. Pilgrims would come from far and wide to pray at the shrine for forgiveness for their sins, and this practice continued for hundreds of years until the dawn of the Reformation. The original pilgrimage was popularised and patronised uh, by St Margaret, who was Queen of Scotland at the time, and indeed it was to her uh, that we have to thank for the most ancient ferry uh, across the River Forth to enable worshippers to take their pilgrimage further. And so I think it's very fitting uh, that one of the roots of the Way of St Andrews, the St Margaret's Way, which begins outside St Margaret's uh, Chapel here in uh, Edinburgh, is named in her honour. And of course, we obviously have the brand new Queensferry crossing to help modern day pilgrims get across the Forth, a bit different, I suspect, from St Margaret's Day. Another of the routes pilgrims can take, St Columba's Way, links one of the, uh, Scotland's holiest sites, St Andrews, with the other, the Holy Isle of or Iona. And the route crosses some of the most breathtaking and scenic parts of the region of Mid-Scotland and Fife, apart from anything else, crossing as it does over many mountain passes and loch sides and taking in Mull, Oban, Bridge of Orkey, Loch Tay and Perth. And that is the most uh, wonderful route. An exhausting one, but yet exhilarating for any keen walker. Other routes that have been undertaken as part of the Way of St Andrews includes St Margaret's Elbow, which takes in some of the most picturesque coastal villages of the East Nook of Fife, such as Crail, Anstruther and Ely, the Roslyn Chapel Way, which begins at another of Scotland's finest pilgrimage sites, the St Ninian's Way, which takes the long way round uh, most of the southwest of Scotland, and St Andrew's Loop, which is only six kilometres long, um, may suit some of the pilgrims of perhaps slightly less fitness, 
mobility of time, but nonetheless, it has the most extraordinary uh, historical interest, uh, particularly in St Andrews uh, in the, in the centre area. So as with uh, many other similar initiatives in Scotland, such as the North Coast uh, 500, the New Heart 200 uh, in Perthshire and in the West Highland Way, such scenic routes can bring excellent sources of tourist revenue to rural areas, which are obviously so desperately in need of it. A 2017 study by the University of Glasgow found that the North Coast 500 succeeded in drawing in an extra 29,000 visitors. I think you might have been one of them, Mr. Fraser, when you mm -hmm. went on that one, um, to the Highlands and an extra 9 million in revenue uh, to the local area in the first year of operation alone. So I hope that we can look forward to similar results in Fife as a result of this new initiative. Almost every uh, major religion in the world recognises the spirituality of travel. Pilgrimages can provide great sources of inspiration for those of all religious faiths and none, and can prove to be deeply uh, spiritual in terms of changing life experiences for those who undertake take them offering as they do the opportunity for reflection and contemplation. So I hope that if the way of St Andrews continues to attract an increasing number of pilgrims in years ahead, it will become as renowned as many of the other ones, uh, such as Santiago, Mecca, the Vatican, and the Golden Temple in Amritsar. So finally, can I pay tribute to those who have been involved in reviving the way of St Andrews, including members of the Roman Catholic Diocese of Edinburgh St Andrews and the students of the University of Edinburgh who have been helping uh, to design this website for a new pilgrimage. Thank you. I call Elaine Smith to be followed by Finn McCarthy. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and can I also thank Murdo Fraser for bringing this debate to Parliament today, and I join other members in congratulating the Way of St Andrews, or the Little Camino, as it's being called, being included by Visit Scotland and the brochure Walk in Scotland for 2019. Hopefully this recognition will encourage um, support and participation and ensure that more pilgrims will want to join in. The Way of St Andrews was revived earlier in this decade, but I understand that the history goes back over a thousand years when kings and princes made regular pilgrimages to pray where the relics of St Andrew were at that time held. And indeed, the large cathedral complex at St Andrews was built as the town struggled to cope with visitors. And as a point of interest, presiding officer, at least I hope it's interesting, the relics of St Andrew were in this parliament last November for a Catholic Church Bishops' Conference event in the garden lobby, which I had the honour of hosting. Um, the pilgrimage declined through wars and it ended during the Reformation, as Murdo Fraser already mentioned. But its revival in 2012 involved 50 pilgrims, including a group of Catholic women from North Lanarkshire. And since then, it's continued, I think, to attract many more participants. The revival of the Way of St Andrews brings with it many benefits for Scotland, including, as obviously we know, increased tourism and investment into communities where the routes pass through. And the businesses this helps the most are small businesses like the pubs, cafes and B&Bs along the way. And while these benefits are welcome, it's also important to remember the benefits for the participants themselves, but not only the spiritual ones, as well as the obvious benefits of seeing fantastic landscapes, as mentioned by um, colleagues earlier, excellent views and historic places of interest along the way. There's undoubtedly a health benefit to participating in the pilgrimage. Recently, a number of members, including myself, attended an event hosted by David Stewart on behalf of Cancer Research UK in the Parliament in support of their Scale Down Cancer campaign. And that event shone a light on the dangers of obesity as the number one cause of cancers in Scotland. Scotland now is one of the heaviest populations in Europe, with 64% of adults and 22% of children considered either overweight or obese. So while tackling the obesity epidemic we face in Scotland involves ensuring that healthy and nutritious uh, food is affordable and available for everyone and that businesses can be discouraged from incentivising the unhealthiest food and things like multi-pack offers, tackling obesity must also involve encouraging positive lifestyle choices like walking and doing pilgrimages obviously comes into that. As we've heard, the Way of St Andrews draws in inspiration from the famous pilgrimage across Europe, the Camino or the Way of St James, ending at the tomb of St James in Santiago de Compostelo in Spain. That pilgrimage has hundreds of thousands of participants each year. The majority of them walk, but over a quarter cycle, and apparently 50% of them are under the age of 25. So I think that's encouraging to, to encourage young people to walk. 
The St Andrews Way is a great opportunity for people across Scotland, especially young people, to get some exercise while they take in the scenery and history these routes have to offer. And of course, as we've heard, it starts in different places, including Motherwell in central Scotland with the Ladywell Way, which I don't think has been mentioned as yet, although perhaps Murdo Fraser did in his opening, <laughs> and I apologise if he did. Um, Presiding officer, there are many reasons why someone would make a pilgrimage. About 50% of the participants in the communal said they belong to a religious denomination and they gave that as a reason. However, many others participate to get exercise, to see different places and scenery on the route, to take in history or simply to escape from the stresses of everyday life. And people can also, of course, raise funds for charity while they walk. Pilgrimage routes are accessible to everyone of all faiths or none. I think it's important that, that we make that clear. Personally, I've been in Vigo in Spain on a couple of occasions, but I've sadly not managed to do part of the way of St James. My own health disabilities can make exercise difficult, but I think even doing part of these pilgrimages has got benefit, and I intend to do at least part of both of them at some point. Uh, I've certainly been to Iona, mentioned by Bruce Crawford, and that's a very spiritual experience. In closing, can I wish all the organisers and volunteers who've been involved continued success? encourage everyone who can to get involved and experience some of the great sites and opportunities that long distance walking offers in Scotland and participate in the Little Camino. And of course, once again, thank Murdo Fraser for bringing the debate to chamber. Thank you. The last of the open debate contributions is from Finlay Carson. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'm extremely pleased to speak in tonight's debate and I thank my colleague Murdo Fraser for bringing it to the chamber. And last year I was delighted to meet Hugh Lockhart, the Secretary of the Way of St Andrews here in the Parliament, where we held a fascinating discussion around the growing popularity of pilgrimage, and in particular the St Ninian's Way pilgrimage route and how it can be promoted. And now Hugh Lockhart's uh, St Ninian's route effectively goes from Carlisle via Whithorn to the north in St Andrews. However, I'd like to focus my contribution on the Whithorn Way, which isn't quite the same as St Ninian's Way, but as you know, with my regular demands for a Galloway National Park, I like to take every opportunity to attract visitors right to the heart of my wonderful constituency. The Whithorn Way is our very own 149-mile walking and cycling route from Glasgow Cathedral to Whithorn. There are 13 segments to the route, each with a very doable distance of about 15 miles. And each section ends in a settlement or a village in order to maximise the usability of the route and also maximise its economic benefit. And local communities are very supportive because they can see the potential benefits in areas uh, particularly where ne tourism needs a boost. Commendably, the route has been mapped and walked by the volunteers from the Whithorn Way Steering Group, with the Whithorn Trust getting involved to promote the route on social media with some clips filmed from a drone. The Trust also involves young people by asking them to design pilgrim stamps at schools that are situated right along the route. And they're a very hands-on group and they even helped create part of the footpath from Whithorn to St Ninian's Cave. This year, to bring it right up to date, they've obtained a grant from Kilgallioch Wind Farm Fund to create a smartphone app to be used by the walkers, which will allow businesses to register details for accommodation, uh, food, walking supplies, and if you get fed up or so feet, even taxis. And, and they're publishing 13 maps and a printed passport uh, and, and also some signage uh, for areas that uh, will deviate off the, the main pass where unfortunately, uh, as often is found, uh, mobile phone signal fails. Now, I don't want to get into any tit for tat or my pilgrimage is better than your pilgrimage. However, it's not often recognized that St. Ninian was in fact the most popular saint in medieval Scotland. He outdid in popular piety Columba and St Andrews, and by the Reformation had cults in England, Ireland, Scotland, and even abroad. And the sheer length of the Christian... Absolutely. Can I also Excuse um, me. <laughs> add my support to St Ninian's, and not that I think the Conservatives will be anywhere near St Andrew's house in governmental terms, but if he ever comes as a visitor, he will notice on the iron doors coming into St Andrew's house on one hand you have St Ninian and then the other St Andrew's and I think that is a fitting reflection of the importance of St Ninian to Scotland. Thank you very much for I that. I can allow an extra few minutes if you would like to continue the argument. Well that was thank you very much for that fascinating intervention. Um, but the, the sheer length of the Christian settlement at, Whis at, at Whitton is unparalleled. Evidence of pilgrimages date at, at back to at least the 8th century, when a poem from Whithorn documents the throngs of pilgrims visiting 
for miracles. The Trust is carrying out scientific tests on human bones from Whitthorn, which are expected to reveal a Christian settlement there from the 5th century, about 100 years before Iona. The excavations and research are being led by the National Museum of Scotland and the University of Bradford and should shine a light on Whithorn from the 5th to the 11th centuries. And these excited results are much awaited in the academic community and of course the media and, and tourism alike. So the early research into Whithorn's origins added to the pilgrimage in the 12th century to the 16th century will undoubtedly create a route capable of supporting the regeneration of Whithorn and surrounding areas through heritage and faith tourism. Encouragingly, there's already reporting, reports of interest from groups in the southeast of England in a new St Ninian's tour for 2020. I'd like to thank Julia Muir Watt of the Whitton Trust for her briefing, and in return, I would like to take this opportunity to bring your attention to her fantastic companion guide to heritage, uh, to Pilgrim Heritage across uh, the route, uh, Walk the Whitton Way. And I should say that other guides are available, but maybe not for the Whitton Way. Deputy Presiding Officer, it's been an immense privilege to speak in this debate tonight. It's absolutely vital we remember our Christian heritage as well as uh, the ability to do that in conjunction with boosting tourism, which is such a vital part of uh, industry for Galloway and across Scotland. I'm delighted to do my bit to promote the St Ninian's Way and the Whitton Way to encourage visitors to come and experience the fantastic natural environment along the route, which will help further support historic discoveries related to the foundations of Christianity in Scotland, which are built in Whitton. Uh, my apologies to all members for the distraction I caused. I knocked over my water glass. Sorry about that. And I now call the Cabinet Secretary to respond to the debate for around seven minutes, please. Uh, Presiding Officer, I'm very pleased to respond on behalf of the Government to what has been a very interesting debate. I hope that it's raised an aspect of tourism, perhaps, that is not always at the forefront when we think about the unique offer that Scotland has. But it is an important one uh, that has clearly shaped the Scotland that we know today. And I congratulate Murdo Fraser for securing this debate on the way of St Andrews, one of the many pilgrim pilgrimage walks across Scotland. When we think of pilgrimages, we often think of medieval journeys on foot to the shrines of saints seeking help for affliction or asking for penance. These type of pilgrimages are not as common today. Walking the same path that these faithful believers walked so long ago allows us to tread in their footsteps and imagine and experience what Scotland was like uh, almost a thousand years ago. You need not be religious or belong to any particular denomination to walk these routes. In fact, when we look at similar pilgrim routes internationally, such as Santiago de Compostela, we see that only 50% of those travelling on the routes identify themselves as belonging to a religious de denomination. It is clear then that people also travel for other reasons, to experience the landscape and heritage or for their own well-being, just to enjoy being in the outdoors. Increasingly, the role, key role of tourism is being recognised for the almost unique reach that it has across our economy, across our country, but now also across our society. Our links with Europe are growing stronger and we continue to see growing numbers of visitors from the European Union. This is a different side of tourism, one that is already experienced by our European neighbours and one that allows us to connect with our own sense of place and of time. Our pil pilgrim ways give us that chance to connect not only with our heritage and history and Scotland stories, as Bruce Crawford told of us in his uh, relation of the history of Killin in his own constituency, but also with our fantastic landscapes. And they also give us the chance to switch off from our busy lives and to immerse ourselves in the best of Scotland. And tourism well-being is increasingly a key driver. And long-distance walking uh, uh, without other uh, uh, counterparts, uh, allowing contemplation, uh, also is becoming increasingly popular as a form of escape from the pressures of everyday life. The appetite for long-distance walking, including pilgrimage routes, is growing, and St Andrews has all the features that make a modern site of pilgrimage. I already mentioned the Santiago de Compostela. Uh, pilgrimage to this famous site in northern Spain was revived recently, as we've heard, and now well over 200,000 people a year make the trip there from all over the world, and as we've heard, 50% of these pilgrims are under 25 and 77% make, uh, make the journey on foot. 
Motives for going on pilgrimage, of course, vary, but they mostly seem to comprise a desire to discover something new, and many pilgrims come back year after year. It is clear then that Scotland is well positioned to cater for our pilgrims and our long distance walking and cycling enthusiasts. And we have many saints, <coughs> such as St. Columbus, St. Margaret, uh, St. Ninian, and of course, St. Andrew. And I was very interested in Liz Smith's contribution and reference particularly to, to the importance of St. Margaret's to Scotland. And each have their own pilgrimage route uh, connected with them. By connecting people with our heritage, we're able to provide them with authentic and interesting narrative as they experience Scotland's fantastic landscape. These are two of Scotland's key strengths, and it is important that we build on them and continue to provide these authentic experiences for our visitors. Even if our visitors don't have an interest in faith tourism specifically, it is likely that they will visit at least one heritage attraction while they are here. So I'm very pleased that we have a good cross-party support for faith tourism and our long-distance routes. Uh, long-distance faith routes are very much in the heart of my colleague Rosanna Cunningham, the Cabinet Secretary for Environment, Climate Change and Land Reform, and she's championed the Three Saints Way long-distance route through the heart of Strathairn, which is part of an even longer aspirational route, the Pilgrim Way stretching from Iona to St Andrews. As I'm sure um, Murder Fraser is aware, we will also see, soon see a new route, the Fife uh, Pilgrim Way, which have, will have its official launch on the 5th of July. And I'm sure Visit Scotland will do what it can to help support and promote the route. Both Elaine Smith and Mur Murder Fraser uh, referenced some of the recent impetus and drive for Pilgrim Ways from faith groups. And I would also like to pay tribute to them as well. Scotland has a long history of welcoming diverse communities from across the world. We have a growing reputation for developing new and innovative ways to engage local multicultural, LGBTI faith and other communities in all of the unique attractions our country has to offer. Today's debate has given us a welcome opportunity to discuss um, other aspects of our tourism offer and I think Pilgrim's Way is a, a, a very, very important part of that and I'm particularly looking forward to the, hear the latest on the St Ninian and uh, developments and also on the Whithorn Way um, work as well. Um, I, I visited some years ago and I was hearing about the ambition and it's great to see the prog progress of that. But we also need to look afresh at what the benefits that a vibrant, resilient visitor economy can bring. Progress has already been significant. We continue to build momentum as we face many challenges ahead. And as we look forward to the future, uh, all I can do is to, to help uh, encourage our industry uh, and our agencies to bring new and authentic experiences to our many visitors. But of course, that authentic experience is not always new. And as we've heard, uh, pilgrimages uh, go back thousands of years. So perhaps all we're doing is rediscovering and reinventing what has already been set out uh, by our forebears. To reach into the past, to celebrate our heritage, our history, and tell our stories, uh, to embrace our shared future in a confident and inclusive Scotland. And I'm delighted that we've had the opportunity to discuss that uh, today. And thanks again to Murder Fraser for bringing this motion to Parliament. That concludes the debate and this meeting is closed.